Hey, here with Alex, I've been this guy 88, and we have the RG550 Genesis. So with this video, it's going to be a little bit different than like your standard review. Uh, the 550 is my overall favorite Ibanez ever. So in this video, I'm going to try to do a little bit of a review of the overall Genesis series and also a comparison from the original 1987 550 to the current Genesis that we have here. If you don't like it, uh, you know, there are some other videos that you can watch if you just want to see a uh, overall general specs and sounds and demos and whatnot but for me i love these guitars so i want to give it my best so it's going to be a little bit longer but i hope you guys enjoy it so grab some popcorn or a snack or shred on while you watch this if you haven't already go ahead and hit the subscribe button give the notification bell a little bit of a click a ring a ding whatever you'd like a pinch harmonic and give the video a thumbs up definitely helps the channel out i don't i don't really post too much especially with the whole covid thing and uh full-time job and holy grail getting in the way of the things so i try to do this as best as i can and i hope you guys enjoy so released alongside with the gem in the same year came the birth of the rg550 now this was part of the ibanez roadstar series and what this features is a lot of similarities to the gem but at a cheaper and more affordable price what this has is a basswood body instead of demarzio pickups you have ibanez's v1 v2 and s1 pickups here still a five-way selector switch with the volume and tone and also the ibanez edge double locking tremolo system followed by the goto tuner still and the top lock and this is the first um, time we're seeing like the original wizard neck profile the super thin shreddy classic that everybody loves and hates at the same time uh, it's a one-piece maple neck with the scarf joint also has 24 frets um, no scallops no disappearing pyramid inlays no demarzios no monkey grip and lion's claw and side input at the angled like the gem but you still have like the tilt neck joint that the gem does have so it's pretty cool and a lot of people refer to this as the poor man's gem once they pop in some demarzios you're good to go now what i was stating about the wizard neck is that a lot of people had problems with the um, neck cracking being so thin it was prone to uh, neck warping and also for pressure cracks from where the top lock was installed by the two allen screws in the back so if you go all over the internet you can find images of the back being cracked so at the time it came in the road flare red the desert yellow and white and what's really interesting is that they actually had some inconsistencies with matching the headstock paint so you will find some 87s with the black headstock rather than the matching headstocks so the rg550 lasted from 1987 all the way down to 1994 uh, some differences from like 88, 89 um, were basically the matching headstocks. So a lot of the 88s and 89s, you're not going to see a matching colored headstock with the color of your choice. Uh, however, they did bring it back after the 90s, um, 91 through 94. So with this one here, this is in 1991 in the laser blue. So same pickup configuration, same pickups too. Uh, I changed these to DiMarzio's except for the S1 in the middle. So this did still have the V1 and V2 pickups um, until I changed them. The other differences too between like the original 87 and everything else is the positioning of the volume pot. So you'll notice that on this volume knob here, it's a lot closer to the um, humbucker as compared to the 91 right here. And actually what's really surprising is that they 
adjusted it once and then that was the ideal set for um, everything, including every Ibanez that they are producing up to today. So in 1997, they re-released the RG550. So they released it with some improvements and some differences that you'll notice is with the wizard neck profile, they actually strengthened the neck with a babinga stripe in the center. Uh, it still has the scarf joint right there, so they are still kind of prone to the whole cracking and everything if you're not careful with them. What they did include too was the new all axis neck joint instead of the tilt neck joint that the originals had. Uh, this feature is a low pro edge rather than the original edge. So a lot of people had problems with the, um, the fine tuners bumping into their hands while they were playing. And these do have DiMarzio pickups, but it was originally released with the new V7, V8 pickups. So with the S1 in the single coil. But other than that, it still has the nice super shreddy wizard neck and it's uh, stable as ever. Another thing to note too is that the Ibanez logos on these guys are gonna be in that chrome finish. So in 2002, Ibanez officially discontinue again the 550. And we are left with the Prestige series, which are also awesome and are still current today. Now, as you can tell, it definitely shares a lot of what the 550s uh, look like and feel like. Uh, these feature like the Ibanez Super Prestige Wizard Necks. Uh, it's a five-piece uh, maple walnut constructed neck with the uh, KTS Titanium Truss Rod. Uh, features a new bridge too. So they went from the Ibanez Edge to the Low Pro Edge to the Edge Pro, which are on the um, first line of Prestige guitars. And then after that, they started doing like all these like roller bearing and all these other crazy tremolo systems. This one here is the Ibanez Edge Zero. Uh, they also have an Edge Zero Two, and I believe up to today, they are going back to the original edges. So in 2007, Ibanez reissued the RG550 yet again, but as part of the RG 20th anniversary series. So the anniversary collection consisted of the desert yellow finish, the road flare, and in black as well. So these were limited to a certain amount of pieces worldwide. And it also came with like the matching straps and matching cases to go with it, which is really awesome. I used to have the desert yellow finish. And at the time before I got that, I played the Prestige series Ibanez's. And then I also had a made in Korea RG470. And that had the all axis neck joint and so when I got an original, I guess, uh, anniversary of the 550, I, I couldn't really get comfortable with the tilt neck joint. So I actually sold it, um, played a few gigs with it, but I just really couldn't jam with it at, at that time. But I kick myself every day for selling it and I'm probably gonna buy one eventually in the future. So the reissue had a lot of features like the original with a few upgrades. So it still had the V1, V2, S1 pickups original edge and instead of the one piece maple neck they actually introduced the five piece um, super wizard neck with a new scarf joint to reinforce the back of the um, top lock system so it's it's more durable and it's more stable than the original design another thing too is that it still had the nice kts uh, titanium truss rod in the center so it's a lot more stable like the prestige series so in 2013, Ibanez released the Genesis collection strictly to the Japan market. I discovered these going through the Ibanez website um, where you're able to select the region where you live. And I was able to access the Japan um, Ibanez website and I found these, went crazy, tried to look for them. Uh, what it did feature was basically a lot of what the 20th anniversary did have, except for the 20th anniversary um, plating and emblem and all of that and the matching case but it did come with the um, original pickups the v1 v2 s1 and it didn't come with the hard case and that brings us to the current 2018 genesis collection that i have here in my hands so the current lineup for the genesis collection features the same basswood body different pickups though so these are the pickups that were introduced in the 1997 550s so you have the v7 v8 humbuckers with the s1 single uh, five-way you also have the five piece uh, maple and walnut um, super wizard neck. It also has the 
scarf joint like I was referring to earlier. Uh, same Godot tuners. You got the top lock, the original Ibanez Edge Tremolo, and the uh, Maple fretboard with all of its shredding glory. So these list at $999.99 US dollars. You can find them on some websites. Some of them are currently on back order. So if you do some good searching, you may be able to find a brand new one still. However, the secondhand market is still readily available for the Genesis collection and also uh, 550s in general from all ages. These do not come with a case. However, they are still made in Japan, which is a great price point for these guys for being so well built as well. So Ibanez gave me this particular Genesis model uh, last year in 2019, around September-ish. Um, I had a tour in Japan in October, uh, lasted for two weeks, and I wanted to really put this to test on the road, uh, not to mention overseas. So for the Japan trip, I shipped this out in my Enki road case. Um, it's the uh, two guitar version. So I had one guitar, my other guitarist had his guitar in there, and we shipped it out. Uh, he detuned his strings and I kept mine perfectly in tune without doing anything. And it arrived in Japan perfectly in tune, which was awesome. So I definitely got to give thanks to Enki Cases for making such an awesome road case. So I would say that's the main reason why this survived the, um, the flight going up and coming back as the Enki case. Awesome, there were no um, neck cracks or anything. And gotta say, check it out if you haven't already. Now, playing shows, I don't recommend just having one guitar. I always recommend backups, but uh, this was more of me testing out the durability, the reliability of the Ibanez RG550 Genesis, essentially. Bottom line, if you're not gonna watch anything else from the video, I gotta say, get one of these guitars. You're not gonna be disappointed. Made in Japan, $9.99, doesn't get any better than this. So when Ibanez sent me this guitar, major props to Ibanez, those guys are awesome. Um, they always support me for everything that I do, um, on tour and out of tour. But I did request for them to not do anything to this guitar. I just wanted them to ship it to my house so then I can set it up and prepare it for the Japan tour. I got a notification that a shipment has arrived in my door got the box, opened it up. Like I said, it doesn't come with the case, but it's perfectly fine. Like I said, this was getting shipped in my Anki case. The action wasn't set up to my preferred specs. So what I went ahead and did was take off the strings. I did polish the frets a little bit just to like a, like a high polish because they were probably like finished off like around like a 1500 grit. Uh, so they didn't have like that mirror shine to it, but it's okay. I do all that stuff on my own anyways, but set the action really low, set the intonation. Uh, this was set up with uh, 9 to 46 GHS boomers. And uh, throughout the overall inspection, I'm just floored. You know, the Made in Japan uh, really shined in the Genesis collection. So there were no high frets. There were no uh, sharp edges. The only thing I really had to do was, like I said, um, just a preference, which was just basically polish the, the frets to like a mirror-like mirror, mirror -like finish. Other than that, I didn't change the pickups, so these still have the V7, V8, and S1 pickups. And during my trip to Japan, I plugged this in directly to an, a Fractal Audio AX8. And they did have some Marshall cabs and a um, few instances there was like a Mesa cab here and there. Um, to power that, I was going through an ISP Stealth um, power amp. And combined with the front of house and the um, the live cab it was just a phenomenal sound now the overall feel of the neck feels a lot closer to like a prestige wizard neck as conjunction with like an original 1987 so uh, for people who are waiting to see if this feels like a 1987 so the short answer is unfortunately no but it still feels really good in the hand so you have a satin finish for the neck here uh, the edge tremolo here produces a very nice <laughs> A very nice fluttering effect, even with the um, the uh, set of strings I have here and the um, the way that the springs are set up. The uh, stock springs are very bouncy per se. So if you do change them to anything else, like the um, uh, the FE tone springs, um, depending on which tension you'll get, you'll have to adjust it so you can get that super springy kind of fluttering effect here. And also uh, over the year that I've been using this, 
I didn't have to change the um, the little collar sleeves on the tremolo arm. It's been pretty pretty stiff uh, ever since. And I do use this guitar on a regular basis. So tone wise, the uh, V7 V8 are very reminiscent of like um, the Marzio pickups. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna change them yet because I still like the way that these sound. The uh, the bridge pickup is very beefy, um, very raw, but it still has pretty good clarity. Uh, the neck pickup is very, very fluid sounding and in the split coils and in the single, you get that very like quacky kind of um, nice clean and bright and chimey kind of tone. <laughs> So this is where we separate the 550s from the other 550s. Uh, a lot of people want to compare this to the original 1987. And I got to say, if you're a collector looking for an exact reissue of the original 1987 guitar, you're not going to find it in here, unfortunately. Uh, I believe it's just, you know, they want to continue to innovate their, their line of guitars. They don't want to go back to the past. However, if they do go back to the past, they're going to upgrade it to basically like modern modern standards. So to me, this 550 is more like a upgraded and uh, future-proofed version of the original. So that essentially goes with the 20th anniversary and the 2013 um, first run of the Genesis series. Uh, you have like a five piece wizard neck, you know, you got the scarf neck joint. Um, it's just got everything that's going to make the neck a lot stronger, more stable to use. And it's basically going to outlive us depending on how well you maintain your instrument. Another thing I got to say is the consistency from each Genesis to each other Genesis, if that makes sense. Uh, I've played around like five different Genesis 550s around from like local guitar centers and from friends who own like their own 550 Genesis. And I got to say the neck consistency feels very, very close to each other. Um, plus or minus like a small, small variance, you know, obviously because these are, are hand finished still. But essentially, if you were to almost go into like a blindfold contest, most of the 550 Genesis series are going to be very consistent with one another. So you're not going to get one that feels too thin and one that feels way too beefy. They all feel really consistent from one another. However, back in 1987, I have two identical 1987 550s here, both in the Road Flare Red finish, both with wizard necks, and they both feel completely different. So I have about five original 1987 550s and each neck profile is almost completely different from one another. So they did have a lot of inconsistencies because obviously these were the first runs and they were still messing around with it. But this feels like what you would expect from a wizard profile from 1987 and going on through 94. This one here though, however, feels like this was a misproduction. This feels more closer to my original Gem 777 profiled neck. So I believe that this was a neck that was going to be in production for a gem, but then got stuck in one of the um, 550 um, lines in the manufacturing process. So it's a lot beefier and it has a lot more of that gem profile. 
than an actual original wizard neck. So that's one thing too. So if you're looking for an original 87 and you haven't really played with a lot of them, you might get a big variance between all of the other ones like I have. I have five of them and like I said, they feel pretty different. So one thing I did with my Genesis model too was I basically took it apart just to see if there was anything different that they did to the 550 that we have now to previous generations. And what I noticed was something really crazy. So with the original 550s, as you can see here, um, you got the, the neck pocket here and then you have the material uh, between the neck and the neck pickup here. Uh, so what they essentially did was that if you were to separate the neck, you'd have the neck and then the additional frets would be above on the 550s here. So you'll find a lot of like, with a lot of bolt-ons, you'll have like the, the neck, neck pocket cracks essentially. But with the 550 Genesis, they actually routed the material all the way through the pickup cavity. And what they did was that they added material to the actual neck. So the material runs all the way through to the end of the 24th fret rather than ending at the 21st fret and having that additional tongue for the 21st fret to the 24th. So what this does is that it feels a lot more solid in the hand, almost like a neck through or like a set neck guitar. Uh, not only that, it just resonates so much better, more sustained, and it almost feels like it's going to be a lot more stable than per se like the original um, neck inner neck joint. I don't know how to really describe it, but uh, with the photos provided, you kind of get the picture. So what would they have to do to produce a true 1987 reissue? Well, they would actually have to make a one piece maple neck with this, without the scarf joint. Um, they would have to reintroduce the V1, V2 pickups for the humbuckers and essentially just recreate that original wizard neck profile. Um, not to mention that the volume position will have to be shifted back up closer to the bridge uh, humbucker right there. So depending if they'll ever do that, we'll see. But for the people who want a true 87, you just got to find one. And right now they are kind of increasing in prices on the used market. So if you do have a chance to find one, definitely grab one if it's in good condition. A lot of them are showing a lot of the signs of the cracking in the back for the um, top lock screws, but it's just a risk that you're gonna have to take. Bring it to a luthier. They are able to uh, stabilize the crack so you won't have to worry about it in the future. But for the price, definitely look at the Genesis line. They have it in desert yellow, road flare red, the chameleon purple, which is really awesome. And then also in the white finish, they do have the, um, the DX version, which has the shark tooth inlays and the rosewood counterpart. But um, I'm not much of a rosewood fan. I'm more of a maple guy. Looking in the catalog for next year, it does look like they are releasing a reissue of the classic 565, which was really hard to find. Um, hopefully I can get my hands on one and do a solid review and comparison to the original. So hopefully I'll get one. If you haven't already, follow me on Instagram at ibanezguy88. You can check my entire Ibanez collection there. So if you do want to see a guitar that I have in my current collection here, a review, uh, an in-depth look, let me know. I got a lot of them. So I want to see what you guys want to see in my next video for whichever Ibanez. It can be signatures, RGs, you name it. Hopefully I got it. Until then, we'll see you guys next time and take care and happy holidays.